Then I met a woman, Laurel Shantigaya. That, back, at that time, she was calling herself uh, Laura Gifford. And I met her in Florida. And uh, she invited me to stay with her. And she was very interested in what I was doing. And then she said she wanted to help me expand the whole thing. And so uh, that was very helpful. So she began helping develop the business and the teaching program. Oh. And so that made it easier for me because I was out teaching and trying to do the whole thing by myself was too much. So she took over and expanded the whole teaching program. And that's where we got into the licensed Reiki master teacher. And uh, yeah, so Laura, uh, and so she changed her name to uh, Laurel Shantigaya. <laughs> yeah. And then she helped yes. develop that. He wrote a and, book um, about Karuna Reiki, no? She wrote a, bo a book about Karuna. She wrote, Karuna yeah, she started, the, she started the Karuna Reiki. And uh, from that, in uh, around 93, I started learning about it. And then what would happen is that people would start bringing symbols to me. And they would say, do you know about this symbol? Yeah. At first, I didn't. But I would keep the copy, you know, the paper. And I would store them, and pretty soon they were other people were bringing symbols I'd already seen. I said, "Oh yeah, I saw that before." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, they say, "What do you know about it?" Well, I've seen it, you know, and blah blah blah. And then uh, someone started saying, "Well, can you teach these symbols?" And I, I go, "No, no, I'm I'm teaching regular Reiki. It's fine. I don't need to teach these symbols." And then, um, but you should go back to your teacher who where you got the symbol from and ask them to teach you. And so then I was saying that, and I said that to one person. He said. Well, you already told me to go to the other teacher. I went to the other teacher. I don't like them as a teacher. I like you as a teacher. I want you to learn these symbols and then teach them to us. <laughs> okay. So I got that as a pretty strong message. And so then I did that. And I worked with Laurel also. And we put together um, what we call, and then we were told the first three uh, three symbols uh, in the set, set had come from the guru Sai Baba oh, okay. in India. Okay. And so at first we called it Sai Baba Reiki. And so, because I, I wanted to honor him because he had supposedly channeled these symbols. Of course. And then we started attracting people who were followers of Sai Baba. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you know, we've never heard that he actually channeled these symbols. So I wrote a letter to the ashram in India. And quite a while later, I get it back. And they say, well, we have to let you know that he actually has not channeled these symbols. And furthermore, he would prefer that you not use his name in conjunction with his healing method. So I'm going, oh, no, you know, because Sai Baba was really powerful. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a big, a tall guy with a big cool. afro. Yeah. No, I yeah, he did miracles and everything. And it's like, wait a minute. I don't want to mess with Sai Baba. I'm just going to stop this completely. I'm disconnecting from it. I don't want to have him, you know, mad at me or anything. <laughs> so then I did that. But then the student said, oh, William, you can't stop. This is it works so well. It's powerful. You got to keep teaching this. So it was just so then I thought, well, was, uh, they was using already the, these symbols, these symbols. Yes. Uh, uh, the uh, how many symbols did you add at this at this point, uh, this moment? Um, I think there were about eight. Well, eight? It, did, it grew. It was about six, seven, eight. Yeah. Uh huh. You know, in the yeah. practitioner level. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh, the practice. Yeah. And okay. called it Sai Baba Reiki. And then I stopped. And then the, the student said, oh, William, you can't stop this. You, it's, it's so powerful. You have to keep doing it. So I thought, ah, maybe it just needs a new name. So then uh, in studying, I, I learned about Karuna as a spiritual path, and it's a special type of energy. So I thought, let's call it Karuna Reiki. And so I started calling it Karuna Reiki and teaching it. And then students would uh, let me know, oh, William, we channeled a new symbol. We added it. We're teaching him that, too. And so then other per a person would say, oh, we changed the attunement, and we, we think this is better, so we're doing this. Okay, and this that. happened very quickly. And so I realized that it's okay for them to do it, but if it happens more, people, Karuna Reiki will mean, it could mean anything that anyone wants to teach. So I went to an attorney, and he said, uh, you can't trademark Reiki but you could trademark Karuna Reiki. And once you own the trademark, you can decide who gets to use it. So he thought, that's it. So I tra had it trademarked, and then I just, the rules were, well, you use the same manuals that we use, the same outlines and everything, so it retains the same energy. Yeah. And that worked. And so... So, so, so today, Karuna Reiki is a, a, a protected, uh, is a registered uh, system, huh? and, and you have all these uh, uh, norms 
So everybody uh, has to follow these guidelines to be sure that they will receive a proper system and a proper energy. Huh? That's correct. And we got the workbooks and everything, and we sell the workbooks, and people can use them in their classes. Okay. But I tell people, if you do want to take this and change it, it's okay with me. Just give it a new name because it's not going to be the same. You have to give it a new name because you can't use Karuna Reiki anymore. You have to give it a new name. And I, you know, I'm, I'm open to that. It's fine. But um, a few people did that, but not too many. Ah, okay. So that's the, yeah, that's the origin of Karuna Reiki. That's okay, amazing. Can you th say a few words about the energy? Karuna Reiki is like, is there a difference with uh, what we call Usui Reiki? It's hard to say what is Usui Reiki, of course, but can you say a few words with this type of energy? Is, this, is there a yeah, difference? Yeah, this was, um, yeah, people, like I didn't say it, but my students were saying, William, this is even stronger than a Sui Reiki. So I oh. thought, oh, wow, okay. And so uh, we were told by the students that that's the case. And so um, then we made it the next step after a Reiki Master. So a Sui yeah. Reiki Master, then Karuna is after that. Yeah. So we require people to be a Sui Reiki Masters first before you take Karuna. Yeah, you have to be. Because yeah. that would prepare you. And what happens is they get level one in your aura. It gets energized with Reiki, level two, the symbols. It gets a higher vibration master, a higher vibration and so then, after that, you can go to Karuna, because then you will be ready. Yeah. And so we ask that people be a Reiki master for at least six months, so your aura gets conditioned to the master energy, mm -hmm. and then you can take Karuna after that, and it can be, you can more easily absorb the higher vibration of Karuna. Yeah, it's part of the norms you you, you add in uh, in the guidelines for Karuna Reiki. Okay, thank you. And um, so those symbols you're using and, and teaching, uh, and we are teaching it uh, in my uh, Reiki school in France too. I'm not the only one. It's very powerful, uh, amazing system you, you you bring brought to us. So uh, these symbols, um, can you say a few words? Not presenting all of them, but just with a few words. What does it add more than the the Reiki, the Usui Reiki mastery? Yeah. First of all, I want to say something about symbols, Reiki symbols. Yeah. And yeah. my understanding is that the symbols themselves don't naturally carry the vibration but it's the attunement that empowers the symbols yeah that's my uh, opinion i mean that's what it seems to me and um so uh that's why we could use these symbols and then we developed we out we out prayed and asked for guidance to develop the right attunement for it what i did is i called together my best students and this is early on and we put all the symbols we had on the floor we all said prayers asking for guidance to create a system that would work and be powerful and be helpful to people. So then out of that, we created the attunement method and which symbols to use and what they're for. So that was very in the very beginning. And um, that was in um, 94, 94, between 94 and 95. Yeah, around that time. There's a lot of years. Okay. And, and, and Laurel was very instrumental in that too. She, she added a, a, quite a bit to the whole thing as well. Okay, okay, amazing. Okay, so the new system, Reiki Karuna, Karuna Reiki, well, amazing. Yeah, and then, you know, by the uh, evidence of the students saying it's more powerful, then yeah. that's why we, we say that, and it's the next step. So, um, yeah, that's how that came into being. I didn't actually decide I'm going to do it. Just people start bringing me symbols, and they said, we want you to learn them and teach them and all that. So just kind of guided into it. And um, so it's so following that's how guidance, it William. All, you, the, all this uh, spiritual journey. Yeah, it's all going back to the angel and guiding me and so forth. Amazing. Um, amazing. And also, what I was saying in the beginning, when I first learned Reiki, I went on that walk. The energy spoke to me and said, this energy can be developed. Yeah. So I, I had that in mind, that I was open to it. You know, And also the kahuna said that... Um, skills can be developed these uh, healing abilities can always be stronger so i had that mindset whereas a lot of people get into reiki and they're not told that they say well you have level one you can't develop it but you could go to level two then it gets stronger but there's nothing you can do to make it strong is what m many teachers say but the energy told me it can be developed so because of that uh, my mind was open to the possibility and i was asking the energy to guide me in how to how to develop it. Oh, that's amazing. So 94, 95, you had Karina Reiki, then Holy Fires, this 
uh, uh, twin, 20 years after that. Huh? Can you talk a little bit? Holy, yeah, Holy Flicker came um, yeah, after that. So, uh, you know, I was uh, guided to always have a clairvoyant person working with me. So the first w- w- person was Michelle Griffith. Then um, she sort of phased out and I got um, Janice Jones. And I began working with her. And at first she worked with the archangels. And then she was beginning to channel Jesus and Sai Baba, the Guru Sai Baba, both. Whoa. And so um, it was uh, in a session I had with her that Jesus came in. And Jesus was as a spiritual master, not as a religious figure at all. But it's purely thing. a spiritual guide, spiritual master. Jesus came in in the session. He said he had a new energy for me that is different. But I have to give up a couple of symbols because they're they're blocking it. So he told me which ones, and he moved those away. And then I got the new energy, but I wasn't told anything about a name or anything. And he said, and you're going to be teaching this tomorrow. So I had a, this is on um, Maui. And so I go, oh, whoa. So then uh, he says, and you're going to be doing the attunements a lot differently. And I go, oh, wow. And he said, all I want you to do is do a brief guided meditation and stop talking. And Jesus said he would come in and give the attunement directly to each student. And so that was, in other words, not, I was doing the hands-on attunements, you know, yes, yes, and you go awesome. behind the person, you meditate and breathe and so forth around the front, take the hands, tap them, all that. I was doing the physical attunements. He's saying, don't do that. And the reason was, he said, that this vibration is so high that it's better that it goes directly to the student rather than coming through the teacher. So if you stay back, then the energy, it allows the energy to go directly to the student. So um, now I didn't know, this is all new to me. So I'm thinking, is this going to work really? Uh, I <laughs> <And> guess so. <laughs> as these students came and paid money for the class and they're of there, <laughs> yeah, and I'm, well, I'm worried. So then uh, what I did though is we went outside, they were sitting in a row, and um, I was in a chair in front of them. And so I, I, I guided them into the whole process. And then I was done, and I said, you can remain with your hands in Gosho meditating. But I was a little bit worried that maybe nothing happened. So I get off of my chair and go into my room in the house, just, you know, hoping it worked. And then uh, I hear, you know, noise, and they're out there, and they're in their circle. I come out, and I say, you know, I go ahead and say, well, how many would like to share about what happened? And this woman goes, I would, I would. And she said, you know, this was so different. I never had anything like this happen before. So she said, I said a prayer asking that there would be a physical manifestation that would demonstrate that something actually happened. And she said, once I went into the house, a whirlwind came around my chair, like a small tornado, went around and around and around and around, and the chair shot straight up in the air, and it shot like 50 yards away. Oh my and God. the students said they were all in an altered state because of the tomb, and they're going like, like watching this chair do that, that that's that was the physical manifestation. Then she knew then that something happened, and so that was the holy fire. And then all the students also, when they spoke, I could kind of see they had a much higher frequency of energy. Yeah. And uh, we practiced, and it, it was really much powerful, more powerful. So, um, so this yeah. So that was the beginning. Oh, it's amazing. You know, uh, so I guess we all had, uh, after taking, t- took a class with you, I trained a lot of, uh, Holy Fire Reiki teacher here. And uh, all of them, the first time, you're just afraid. <laughs> Will it work or not? And then these things, it's like amazing. Yeah. This, yeah, wow. yeah. We are guided and we are clean, purified. It's like, so, so can you give a, a, a um, explain to us what is the Holy Fire energy? What is this new energy? Yes. Um, so the holy fire energy is coming uh, like Jesus has facilitated this as a spiritual master, but it comes from the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is an acts, you know, acts, uh, aspect of God. So it comes from the Holy Spirit. And um, in the Bible, they actually uh, use the words holy fire several times, that this energy comes from the Holy Spirit. But it comes in a non-religious sense. And so they're saying that people made Christianity, but the energies are pure and not of any religious background. So they said this holy fire is the pure energy of the Holy Spirit 
coming to each person as holy fire healing okay. and um okay. that's where it came from yeah we, we can so feel because i accepted it then that started to happen yeah yeah it's very very amazing very different from what we knew first and what will you will you uh, what do you want to say to somebody that will say i don't want to practice religion i want i don't want religion at all so these holy spirit things can disturb me what what would be your answer as a teacher because we have sometimes some people that are disturbed about the you know jesus holy fire holy spirit yeah well what we say to them is that uh What, what you have is called religious trauma. And I tell them I had religious trauma too, but this is free of religion and it's the pure healing energy. And I also tell people just meditate and ask for guidance. And if you feel guided to take it, follow your own guidance. If not, don't take it. Yeah. And so um, then if the, it's right for them, the holy fire will come through and they'll feel, yes, you know, they want to take it. Right. So, I explained that it's not religious. Um, it's a non-religious uh, version of energies that religion uh, made use of. So religion doesn't own healing. Uh, so, you know, they religion glommed on to healing and made it, uh, you know, part of their, you know, uh, practice, but they didn't own it oh. to begin with. So It's then we can practice healing these healing energies without having any religious connection okay and in fact what it does is uh, it heals any religious problems you may have it heals um religious trauma because a lot of people feel they've been traumatized by the idea of you're going to hell if you don't go to our church and you're a sinner and you're a bad person you're wrong well it heals that so that you're free of all that condemnation and you know you rise up to being this glorious being of light And certainly you're not a sinner or anything like that. You're not, there is no hell. And um, you just rise up out of that, um, that negative energy. So um, that's the Holy Fire heals religious trauma. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah. You, you, you yes. know, you talk a, a little bit, a lot of about guidance. And I really felt after I took the classes, the first one, uh, it was a few years ago with you, uh, Holy Fire teaching, uh, I, I'm more guided now. It's very yes. more powerful. Can you say a few words with Holy Fire and guidance, please? Yeah, the Holy Fire does increase uh, the level of guidance it provides for you. And so uh, it opens that channel, and it's a much purer, higher vibration. And so we've learned quite a bit about the Holy Fire. And um, basically what was happening is one day I was in my place on Maui, When they had done some work and I came out into the main room, I saw Jesus and Jesus looking up at some, he's staring intently like this, like looking up like that and thinking, what's he looking at? And so when I ask that question, it triggers, you know, I'm saying, what's he looking at? Then next to me, I feel a presence and I say, what or who are you? And it says, we are the brothers and sisters of the light. I go, wow. <laughs> so then after that, um, you know, it put that thought right solid into my brain. We are the brothers and sisters of the light. And so after that, then I had more sessions and we, I learned out more of the details and what they do and all that. And so the brothers and sisters of the light are the founders of all the world's religions and spiritual paths. Now, they, each of them started a religion on earth and it was a separate religion. But as they rise up into higher dimensions of consciousness, they get to a height where all of them join together and become friends. And so uh, sometimes they're called the Great White Brotherhood or the Ascended Masters. And so they told me, just call them brothers and sisters of the light because they wanted to have both both male and female and, um, you know, men and women. And uh, although they don't, they say, actually, we don't have a gender, but we want to come across so we have a better vibration for people on earth. So they said, we're the brothers and sisters of the light. And um, you know, the founders of all the world's religions and spiritual paths are all enlightened. Um, and um, then once you uh, get initiated into holy fire, you have a stronger connection to them. And then they uh, can come through with a powerful guidance. Yeah, so they guide us by uh, through God practice.
Chers téléspectateurs, merci d'avoir regardé cette interview jusqu'ici. Il s'agissait de la deuxième partie d'une interview en trois parties dans la prochaine et dernière version. William Niran va nous raconter comment est-ce qu'il a déposé tout autour de la Terre des grilles de cristaux Reiki pour la paix mondiale. Je t'invite à t'abonner en cliquant dans le lien sous la vidéo et à très bientôt pour des vidéos sur le même thème.